In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can change your Google Assistant settings for your phone as well as your Google Home speaker. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. Now, I recently published a video all about the new Google Home application and how to use it. But there was one section that I was not able to go in depth on because I was saving it for today's video. So let's head right into the Google Home application. This will work if you have an Android phone or an iOS device. Make sure that it's updated in the app or Play Store as well. So once you go into the app, you're gonna head over to the far right side and select the accounts tab right here. So that's that little icon you see. And so here you'll see your different accounts at the top. You'll see your home and the different devices you have on your current Wi-Fi network. But right here you have under general settings, you have settings. Now on the iPhone, it says Google Assistant, and then you'll see a general settings down a little bit lower. But that is the option that we're going to go into today. A few of you have also asked, where is screen mirroring? That's right here, just so you know, I'll go in more in depth on another video there. But here we're gonna select settings, and this is how you can go in and adjust all of your Google Assistant settings. So the first tab we have here is personal info. We have assistant, services, and then our home, and that's all the home control devices. So first up, we have our nickname. So nickname is what your Google Assistant will call you. So you can just tap right here. You can add in a new name, select OK, and then this is what Tech with Brett. Google Assistant will continue to call me. You can also spell it out or record your own, and it will replicate what you say there. Now, the next option here is your places. So you can add your home and work address right there. Here we have getting around mode. So depending on if you are navigating on your phone or on your um, Google Assistant, here is your default navigation settings. So if you always drive in your car, you can set these as drive in your car. Or if you like public transport or walking or biking, there you have the other options of what you can set. Now we have payment methods. So you can set up different ways to pay with your Google account. Here we have weather, so you can change your preferred weather method. I like Fahrenheit here in the US. Here I can see reservations, hotels, and events. So this is gonna pull in all the information from my email and show me different reservations that I have set up. And then down here at the bottom, you have purchases. So this is gonna show you purchases that you have on your Google account right there. So not too much to do with Google Assistant settings, but very important to know where all that info is. Next, we're gonna jump into the assistant. So here are the, a lot of the assistant settings. So when you adjust the settings here, not only is it gonna change the Google Assistant settings for your phone, it will change them on your Google Home device as well. So right here, languages for speaking to your assistant. So right now I have it set to English, and then you can also add a second language. So here are all the other languages that the Google Assistant currently speaks. So you could choose a second language because Google Assistant is now bilingual. It can understand two different languages at one time. Here you have your Google Assistant voice. So this is where you can change how your Google Assistant sounds. So you can just tap. Here are the voices you can pick for your Google Assistant. And as you go through. Voice and want me to keep using it, just, just stop here. So there you can hear all the different voices. I like the original the one, the red Google color Assistant. right here. Next, we have continued conversation. So depending on what device you have, you can turn on continued conversation and it will actually continue to listen to you once you activate your Google Assistant. So if I say, hey Google, what's the weather like tomorrow? In Linden tomorrow, it'll be sunny with a high of 69 and a low of 44. What's the weather like on Monday? Monday in Linden, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a high of 64 and a low of 41. Thank you. You're welcome. So there I was able to do multiple commands with my Google Home by activating it only one time. Also down here in the continued conversation feature, it will show you what devices are compatible with continued conversation. Right now it is only the Google Home speaker. So a Google Home Mini, a regular Google Home, or a Google Home Max. No other devices or Google Assistant speakers that I have are capable of doing continued conversation. So next we have voice match. So this is the option to allow your Google Assistant to understand who you are. So when I ask, hey Google, what's my name? Your name is Brett. So there it understands who I am and it can actually give me different calendar information and 
things specific to my voice. Now, if my wife activates the Google Home and adds a calendar event, it will add it to her account because we've taught the Google Assistant her voice. And this is the option where you would do that to teach the Google Assistant your voice. So next we have home control. So this is very similar to what we saw in the past. Here we have devices, we have rooms. If we want to add or connect new devices, we can come in here and see what we have connected and connect new accounts there. Now next here is where you have the routines. So there's a cool new thing that you can do in the routines. So down here, when you add a new routine, you can add a custom command. So I could add pretty much anything and it will activate the Google Assistant once this routine starts. So that's the first thing that you can do. And then we have the set time and day right here. So you can actually choose a specific time and day when that routine is going to happen. So if you want a sound to play every night at a certain time, you can have that happen right there. And then next we can add some other things. So I can just select add action and you can add multiple items at once. So this is really nice because it's completely open to what you want it to do. You can add any phrase in there. You could add a repeat after me phrase. So it just says something to you every single night. And then down here you have the option to add media after it goes through the entire routine. So you can choose music, news, radio, podcasts, audiobooks, or sleep sounds. And here it lets you choose the exact sleep sound you would like it to play. And so there you can customize and add as many custom routines as you want. And then down here, there are some already made routines. So if I activate the Google Home and say good morning, it can go through and do a bunch of different things. Here it will do some just for the phone and then some of the other ones, it will do it on the Google Home if that's where I activate my Google Assistant and say good morning. And then here we have email and updates. So if you wanna know about new features, you can turn that on. And then down here, it will show all the devices that your Google account is connected to. So here we have this phone, and then we have a kitchen home and a Max. Now this is my Tech with Brett account, not my main account, so I don't have quite as many there. So that's everything that you can do within the Assistant tab. Now if we go over to the Services tab, this is where we can adjust more of the things that we would use the Google Assistant for. So first we have voice and video calls. Now this is available only in certain countries, so I believe here in the US and Canada. So we can select mobile calling, and here we can choose to have our own number added. We can choose to have Google voice number or project Fi. If you don't have your number, it will show an unlisted number. So you would just select edit, add your own number, and then it will send you a text to verify your number. So when you call out from the Google Home, it will actually call out and show that you are the one calling with your personal number. So that's pretty cool right there. And you'll also have another option for video chat on certain devices. So using Google Duo and making sure that your account is linked as well. So next here, we have the music options. So this is where we can link different music services. So I could link Pandora, Spotify, or my Google Play Music, or just choose no default provider right there. Then we can choose our news source. So when you ask Google to play news, this is what it's going to play. So it's gonna play through all these news sources. Now, some of these do mention that it will play video on smart displays, which is pretty handy to have. But if you don't want some of these, click the X and it will remove them. You can also go in and add your own favorite news sources that you like to listen to. And then you can also change the order of these right there. Next, we have photos and videos. So I've talked about this quite a bit, but it's actually going to link your Netflix account so that when you say, play the office, it's gonna pick up where you left off when you um, play it to your Chromecast device. And down here, you can also link your Google Photos, so it will be able to play your different Google Photo pictures that you request it to play. One new feature in the Photos and video section is YouTube Kids. So you can actually now ask Google to play YouTube Kids content right to your Chromecast device. I find that really nice because my kids could watch anything from YouTube, but with this, it's a little more curated for them, so I'm not as concerned when they would play this from the Google Home in the kitchen to the TV. So that's a new feature that has recently been added, which is really cool. And then next we have TV and speakers. So this is gonna show you all the different TV or Google Assistant speakers that are connected to your account. So I could come in here and quickly unlink them if I needed to for any reason. And also if you wanted to add a new device, you could do that right from this menu as well. Now next you have calendars. So this is what calendars your Google Assistant is able to see. So you can just select 
a bunch of the different calendars you want and you can add to the specific calendars and those will all show up when you say, hey, what's on my day? It will display those calendars. Next, you have your shopping list. So um, you can have it open through Chrome or Express. So if I just select Chrome, it's gonna open the web page and take you right to your shopping list. Here you can see all the items that you've added. You can even add new people so that you can share a shopping list. And then you can also just check off things or delete things right there from the web or from the Google Express application. Next, we have reminders. So all the reminders you set through your Google Home, even if they're recurring, those will show up in here. Here you can see that I said buy batteries when I get to Home Depot. And then the other day I said I need to check the moon every night for a homework assignment for my daughter. And so all these different items are all right there within the reminders. And if you wanna set a new one, just click the plus and then it'll pop up with this menu where you can set either a time or a place to remind you. And then down here we have stocks. So you can choose the specific stocks you want to follow. So if some of these I don't wanna follow anymore, I can just click the X or I can add some of these down here. And then one other thing that is very important about the Google Assistant is finding out all the cool things it can do. So down here, kind of buried in the very bottom is the explore section. So explore is a way that you can find anything that the Google Assistant can do. So it has a search box up here at the top. So you can type in pretty much anything and find out if there is a action available for what you want to do. So let's say I want to um, track my baby stats. So if I type baby stats, there we see a few different things automatically pop up. So I'm just gonna search baby stat. And here I could come in and learn about this action. So if I say, ask baby stats how many feedings in the last day, it will then tell me that if I have added that through the application and you can link your account there. So this is a great way to find out if certain devices are supported. So if I wanted to find out if I can buy LifeX bulbs and see if they're supported there, I can search LifeX, open that up, and here it tells me different commands that I could use with the LifeX bulb. So then here I can click try it out and it will try to use some of the commands that it has here. I can click the drop down and find out more commands. So this was the same thing with my vacuum. So I search for dbot and there it popped up. And then here I found all the commands that I could use with my connected vacuum. So it's really nice to have this menu all right in there. So there's pretty much anything. If you wanna do math or if you wanna find something for your kids to be able to do, you can come in here and learn certain things. So here's an action called simple math. So all you need to do is activate the Google Assistant and say, talk to simple math. If I want to learn about fun Easter eggs that you can use with your Google Assistant, I can just type in Easter eggs Right there, it pops up. And then of course, we just have a simple action right there. Tell me your Easter eggs and the Google Assistant will tell you those. So I really like the Explore tab. That is something that you can do when you activate the Google Assistant. So right down here, when I activate it up here, I see that little compass. I can select the compass that will take me right to the Explore tab as well. So this is where I find out a bunch of cool things that you can use with the Google Assistant and make some videos on it. So that's where I find out a lot of these items. Down here, you have different categories. So if you wanna search lifestyle, business, education, food, drink, games, fun, home control, local, all, all those options right there. And then again, down here at the bottom, you have one more option, which is your action. So these are actions that are specific to things that you have linked within your Google Assistant. So if I select link, here I can see all of the different applications that I have linked within my home. So here I have my smart garage. I can open this up and see the different things I can ask my smart garage. And I could also rate these. So if I wanna rate how this works, I can come in here and do that by giving it a rating right there and submitting the rating and you could write a review and see what others say about that action as well. So there you go, that is how you use all the Google Assistant settings right there through the Google Home application and adjust them to your liking. So if you guys have any further questions about your Google Assistant settings and what you can do and what is available, please let me know in the comments below. And if this is your first time here and you found this helpful, I would love to have you subscribe so that you can be notified of my new and upcoming videos. I'm all about helping you learn everything you possibly can about your Google Home and your Google Assistant to make your life better. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.